Today's episode is pre-recorded, but don't worry, we're still going to have a lot of fun today. We're going to be learning Learning to Fly by Tom Petty, Heartbreakers. I love this song. It's so much fun to play. It's four chords. Technically, we're gonna be, there's going to be some suspensions in there, uh, but for the most part, it's four chords. Intro, verse, chorus, guitar solo, all the same four chords. It's a really, really beautiful song. We're going to be focusing on the acoustic parts of this song today. So have your acoustic guitar in standard tuning. And also, I'm going to be giving you a second option on how to play this. So have a capo handy towards the second half of the lesson. We're going to use this and give you guys a little bit of a different way to play this too. That sounds equally great. So again, acoustic guitar in standard tuning. And as always, folks, if you're enjoying these lessons, be sure to subscribe to the channel. It helps the cause. This one's really fun, really excited about this one. So let me know where you are tuning in from and your dream acoustic guitar, all right? So where you're tuning in from and your dream acoustic guitar, whatever that may be, put it in the comments. And as always, if you guys are enjoying these, be sure to subscribe to the channel, all right? So here we go. Here's Learning to Fly by Tom Petty and Heartbreakers. Those are the four chords. A really, really beautiful song. Now, beginner friendly, of course, but there's something here for everybody. With these chord voicings, Tom Petty always loved to have that beautiful, like droning note, whatever it was, and a lot of the chords that he played, just one of my absolute favorite songwriters. Talk about just really beautiful yet impactful chords and melody. Just one of the best to ever do it, I think. So. We're gonna be going through the four chords and strumming patterns that are gonna be in this tune. So this first chord that we're gonna play, and again, we're covering so much ground here, intro, verse, chorus, guitar solo, everything. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna play an F9 chord. It's gonna sound like this. Again, a really, really pretty chord. We're gonna do here, so we're gonna get our first finger and place that on C. That's gonna be our first fret of the B string. Second finger, second fret of the G string, that note is A. Your third finger is gonna reach here in the third fret, the D string, that's gonna be our F note. So that is our root. So with a basic F chord, all right, F, A, and C are one, three, five. In this case, we're playing an F9, so what we're gonna do here, so we're gonna get this fourth finger and we're gonna place that in the third fret, the E string. That's our G note. Now, this fourth finger for the entire song is going to be one, our major pivot point here. We're gonna constantly have that G note ringing through this entire song. It's quite beautiful. It really makes a six string acoustic sound like a 12 string, sort of. It, I think it does a really, really good job. So that's gonna be the chord here. And how we're gonna strum it is gonna be an up or a down, up, down. So just like this. Now, if you want, to put your thumb on the first fret of the E string to have that additional F note there, you can. So it would be like a, if you wanted a bit more of that bass in there, you can do that too. But if that's too much to move the thumb up there, you don't need to do that. Uh, but it's comfortable for me, so I like to do that. So what we're gonna do here is a down, up, down. Let's go ahead and do that a couple times here. Just like that. Now from here, we're gonna to go to a C chord, but like I said, we're gonna keep this fourth finger where it is on that G note third fret of that E string. What we're also gonna to do to here as well is we're gonna have a secondary pivot point. The first finger and the fourth finger, keep them where they are. All we are going to move is our second finger, bring that up to the second fret of the D string, that's our E note. And then our third finger is gonna go in the third fret of the A string, that's our C. So for this chord, it's a C chord, adding in that higher G here. Because if we look at the notes in C, C is our one, E is our three, and G is our five. So we have all the notes we need to make that chord. So let's go ahead and strum this just downward just so you can hear how this voicing of the C chord sounds. Isn't that beautiful? 
So just like that. So what we're going to do here with this strumming pattern coming from that F7 that we played just a moment ago, it's going to be an up, up, down, up. And it'll sound like this. All right. Let's go ahead and do that again and then we'll combine it with the F9. So here we go. time. All right, let's go ahead and combine it with the F9 now. Again. And last time. So pretty cool, right? So what we want to do here is I'm sure, especially for my beginners, we want to do here is really warm up that hand. So if we're really starting to feel that, that, that fourth finger tense, no problem. We're learning. These are, these are all growing pains. It's all good. So don't feel bad if it's happening to you. I like to do a one handed wave here with all the fingers, starting with the pinky into the palm and then following through all the way to the end of that first finger. All right. So doing that a couple times to get the blood flow and then like a nice one handed clap will also help there too. All right. So the next chord here is going to be an A minor seven. So here's what's really interesting here. We are still going to keep the first finger and the fourth finger where they are. Again, our pivot points here yet again. So from that C chord, okay, leave the first, fourth finger where they are, and even the second finger. Isn't that cool? So we got three pivot points here. Pretty cool. So keep that second finger where it is as well. All we're going to move is that third finger to the second fret of the G string. All right, that's our A note. So when we're looking at this A minor seven, you may say, wait a second, I thought an A minor seven's like this. And in fact, you are correct, because an A minor seven, if we're looking at the notes, and again, a little theory here, I always like to throw it in, A minor, okay, one flat three five, that is the formula if we're talking about the notes for A minor, A, C, and E. But when we have the flat seven, if we wanna make a minor seven chord, we have to add flat seven to that formula. So it's one flat three five flat seven. In this case, any guesses on what the flat seven is? It's G, so we're keeping that finger there. So we can maintain the regular old A minor shape that we know, but we add this G in there and it makes it a minor seven. Kind of neat. And notice the difference between our traditional A minor seven in that open position and playing it the way that Tom does in the song. Not neat. Again, kind of cool. Thought I'd mention it. So with this A minor seven, it's gonna be a down, up, down strum. All right, so just like that. So let's combine it with the F9, the C chord, and then our A minor seven. And we're almost done learning the song, which is really, really cool. So let's go ahead and uh, go through these three chords together. F9, C, and A minor seven. Let's go ahead and do it. Take it slow. Switching to A minor seven. Again, without the commentary. Let's do the right chord there. There we go. So that's what's happening there. So let's go to our final chords. I know I said there were four chords. If we're counting G sus four, is it technically five? Yes, but it's a five chord song. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna play G in this fashion. You guessed it, we're keeping the fourth finger on that third fret of the E string. Don't move it, okay? We're gonna get our third finger here, placing that in the third fret of the E string. That note is G, should sound like that getting your second finger here, second fret of that A string, that note is B, B as in boy. If we're talking about the formula to build a major chord, one, three, five, in terms of G major, G is our one, B is our three, and D is our five. We have them all here. So we're gonna be playing this G chord in this fashion with the open B string, all right? So that's what's happening there. Now with this section, including that G sus four, it's gonna sound like this and I'll play it on its own. Okay. Give it another good upstroke there, so. And how we're playing that G sus four, all we're gonna do here, we're keeping that G chord as is, 
We're going to get this first finger here. Place it on the first fret of that B string, that note is C. So we're going to do a down stroke of the G chord. Get that first finger ready to go down on the first fret of the B string, making the G sus4 striking upwards with our strumming. And then we have our down stroke, lift the first finger to G, and then up stroke to complete that same G chord. Okay? So, nice and slowly here, let's just go through to the G to G, sus4, back to G. time. Let's go ahead and do it a little faster. Pretty neat, right? So that's what's happening there. So folks, intro, verses, chorus, all three of these chords. I'm gonna play through it slowly. We'll build up the speed, all right? And uh, this, is, this is super, super fun. And we'll get to another way of playing this as well, including a really cool quick part that happens in the tune too. So here we go from the top, F9 to C, A minor, seven to G. And again, if you're enjoying these lessons, be sure to subscribe to the channel, it helps the cause. And if you wanna check out all the cool stuff Fishman is up to, uh, including the R Spectrum DI and the really cool Matrix Infinity Enhanced pickups that I have here in my Martin 00017. You can click the link in the video description. Would love it if you did. So let's go ahead from the top. Here we go. Take your time. Great. Just a really, really beautiful chord progression. So that's what's happening there. Now, I'm doing a nice up down for, for strumming for me that feels really, really good. And from what I can tell on the record, that's what's happening there. It's really big, jangly. I believe there's even a 12 string guitar in there that's really, you know, playing through that, that progression. I also watched a couple live versions, and I encourage you guys to, to look at this too where Tom is just playing this with downstrokes. It's got a really interesting vibe to it too. So I encourage you, uh, you, you can play it the way that I do with the, the, the up down strumming, or you can check out how he plays it live and it's all downstroke. So I'll play it that way just so you can get an idea, but it, it's like this. It's an interesting way to play it too. And again, it, it, it sounds really, really intimate in that way too. So again, I encourage you, check it out and see. I, I like the big guitars. It so reminds me of Tom Petty, the nice big jangly acoustic guitars. So let's go through that section one more time and then we'll look at two little sections and then we'll play the capoed version of this tune, all right? So here we go from the top and play it a little faster. So here we go. So there it is there. Now we go through the song. So we have the intro, which is that chord progression repeated four times into verse one, repeated four times into a chorus, yet another four times. And then we get into a verse two, which is another four times of this progression into the chorus. You guessed it another four times. And then there's this really cool thing that he does here. And it's just based on the G and the G sus four. And it sounds like this. And he's just hanging on that transition right from that one to the sus four. So, and that happens five times. I'll play it through. And that's all it is. Playing it a little slower here. I'll do that again.
Okay, so we have that after the second chorus. We have that little bit of playing that veggie chord. So that's something I wanted to mention there. And then after that, there's a guitar solo. We go into a third verse into yet another chorus, and then that G sus part comes back again. So for context, what I'll do here is I will do the chorus and then go into that, that G sus section so you can see how that all blends together. So here we go. Pretend we're in a chorus. And we're repeating this four times. So that's what's happening there and that's how that flows. I encourage you to listen to the song so you can hear that part. It's really, really cool. So then we have this little quick section here and it sounds like this. It happens in the two minute, 52 second mark of the song that's on uh, Into the Great Wide Open. That really, really awesome album by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. So it sounds like this and it's the same chords. Check it out. just a little bit of different texture and it's where he it's it's this band that kind of builds up for a little bit it's really really cool and all it is is a little bit of a different strumming pattern not too crazy folks so what we're gonna do here still on that F9 down up down up that's it and I like using my wrist for this one to get really really fine-tuned and really really um, really really detailed on that I mean could you but I feel like I'm fighting a little bit more air when I do that. So I like to, to strum that section from the wrist, just like that. And then from the C chord, you're gonna go down, up, and then A minor seven, we're gonna repeat that quick part with that wrist, and then to our G, up stroke on the sus four, back to G. So what I'll do here is I will play through that chorus into the G sus section and then into the quick part so we can see how all that goes. So here we go. Chorus and I will, um, I'll cut that in half so I'll only play the, the progression twice. So here we go. Again. Isn't that neat? Again, a really, really cool part there. So something I wanted to mention. So that's the tune. At least how the acoustic is playing, right? What Tom is doing on this song. So that's what's happening there. If we wanted to keep it without a capo, that's how you would play it. So we could do here. Say you're playing this with a friend or say you're playing with a looper and you've got that part down and it's great. You want to add an extra guitar. So what you could do here is I thought this would be really cool. I don't think they do it on the record, but again, if I can give you options that are really, really fun, I figured why not? Um, so let's go ahead and grab a capo. What you're gonna do here is you're gonna place it on the fifth fret. All right, so just like this, okay? I have one of these handy Daddario ones that just, you just twist it on, you're good to go, all right? I'm someone who likes to get as close to the, the capo as I can. I like to keep it as perpendicular with the, the fret as I can. Now it looks like I'm right on top of the fret, but I'm not, I'm really, really close to it. You can't really see the fifth fret here, but know that I'm really, really close to it, but not on top. So if we were to play this with a capo, this is how I would do it if I was a secondary guitar player and it would sound like this, check it out, it's kind of cool. So that's another way that you can do this too. I really encourage you when you're playing with another guitar player, it's always great to put on a capo and, and play rhythm as well. It's really, really fun. It just adds a nice fullness. So let's talk about this, this chord progression here. So we are playing the same exact chord, just one of them we're transposing 
with a capo here. All right, it's a really, really great tool for us guitar players. So what we're gonna do here, this F9, we're turning into a C, so. Here's how we would play it. Play your regular old C chord, first finger on the first fret in accordance to the capo, okay? Second finger on the second fret of the D string in accordance to the capo, okay? And then your third finger, third fret on the A string, all right? Now from there, you're gonna get your pinky, or your fourth finger, placing that on the third fret of the high E string. And that's gonna be our pivot point there. Still using that pinky. This is quite the pinky workout on this song, okay? And same strumming pattern. Down, up, down. Now from here, we're gonna go ahead and grab this G chord. Keep your fourth finger where it is, okay? We're maintaining that pivot point, okay? Moving your second finger up to the second fret of that A string, and then your third finger, third fret of the E string, as always, in accordance to the capo. And again, it's gonna be an up, up, down, up strum. It'll sound like this. Now with the C chord, let's give it a little context. Here we go, I'll play it nice and slowly here. Let's do it again. One more time. Pretty cool, right? Let's do it a little faster. chord. So there it is. Now our A minor 7, we're going to be turning into an E minor 7 when we use the capo at the 5th fret. So we're going to do here from that G, again, you guessed it, 4th finger, keep it where it is. Get your 1st and 2nd finger, okay, 1st finger, 2nd fret of the A string and your second finger, placing that on the second fret, the D string. And again, down, up, down, strum. And that's an E minor seven, all right? So let's go ahead and now incorporate that into the mix, do those first three chords. Here we go, I'll play it through a little slower. like that. Let's go ahead and now pick up the speed. I think we got it under our fingers. Here we go. Again. Now, I think we really want to resolve this chord progression. I know that I do. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to a D major chord. Okay. In this case, in actuality, this is a G chord, okay? But we're capoed, so we're calling it as if it's a D chord, okay? First finger, first, second fret, rather, of the G string, okay? And your second finger, second fret of the E string, third finger is gonna go on the third fret of the B string in accordance to the capo. So what we're gonna do here, down stroke, or I'm sorry, up stroke, and then our fourth finger, okay? We're gonna place it here on third fret, high E string, and that's a D sus four. So another upstroke, and then another lift that fourth finger off, going back to D major, down, stroke, up, stroke. So it looks like this, just that part by itself. I'll do that again. Right. And again, I'm being very, very, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? I really want you to see how I'm strumming it, so I'm making the strums maybe a little bit larger than I would in real life if I was playing this live, but I want you to see where those up and down strokes are. All right, so let's go ahead and do that again. One more time. Let's put it all together. Here we go, from the top. Again, C, 
G, E minor seven, and we're keeping that B string open there too. And then D to D sus four. Okay, just like that, nice and slowly, here we go. Some of those open strings in there, that's okay too. Like that. So, let's go ahead and pick up the speed. Here we go. That's what it is, pretty cool, right? So when we talked about that G sus part at the top, right? All that's gonna be is substitute it when you're capoed as a D and a D sus four. And then the fast section, you're gonna play these same chords, but play them in the same way. So that'll sound like this. What I'll do here is I'll do a chorus, and then I will, I will do that G sus section, which if we're capoed, it's gonna be a D sus section and then into the quick part. So here we go. So I'll split the chorus in half. Here we go. Here comes the fast part. great really really neat so check it out so what I'll do here for the last minute I'm gonna take this capo off but I'll put it right back notice how these sound really beautiful together so again we're gonna go ahead and summarize what we did so here we go how it's played on the record three parts now capoed put the capo on da, da, da. there we go now capo 5 version here we go follow along great song. I hope you guys really enjoy this because man, I, I, I'm like, I haven't taught this one yet and I really need to do it. So that is Learning to Fly by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Really encourage you to listen to a bunch of live versions of this as well as the, uh, the version on the record. And it's just such a killer song. Tom Petty is one of my favorites. Just such a fantastic, fantastic uh, singer and songwriter. We miss you, Tom. We miss you. Um, again, it is such an honor to do this week after week on the Riff Rundown. If you guys are enjoying these lessons, be sure to subscribe to the channel. It does help the cause indeed. As always, wishing you much success in your musical journeys. It is so wonderful to see all the kind comments. I'm really glad these lessons are helping everybody. And again, if they're helping you out, be sure to share them with a friend. Click that like button and that notification to, to let you know when I'll be doing new Riff Rundown episodes. And again, I'm here every Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern live on YouTube. Again, it is such a blast. Wishing you all so much success. And uh, folks, can't wait to do this again next week. Everybody take good care and uh, see you guys next time.